What are the potential risks to scaling Optimus production due to its required components? If many materials are sourced from China, how might this affect production costs? Could China's access to these resources and parts give them an advantage in leading the robotics industry? Very good question. And again, uh, Stephen Wesson, thank you for coming. I like the way you think. You're thinking about risks, risk management, supply chains, geopolitical turmoil, tariffs. All of this tariff turmoil over the past three months has not only driven everybody bonkers, including myself, <laughs> it's hurt the markets, but it's made people think about how integrated supply chains are around the world. But there's a couple of things um, about Optimus key features and a couple of things about how Tesla operates. First of all, they source everything locally, everything as much as they possibly can in the 90% of everything, sometimes a lot even, even higher. But the, what makes the Tesla robot different, and that there was a half marathon in Beijing, I think, yesterday for robots, which was kind of fascinating to see how they were all, you know, remote controlled. And it was just the variation. And there's no doubt China is going in whole hog into robots because they need labor. And that's so important. But a couple of things here. In my opinion, the brain is most important. And Tesla has mini AGI in FSD in Tesla, and they have XAI, which is the biggest, you know, brain cortex data center on the planet. And they've got the most real time information as well. So when you're thinking about a robot, yeah, you might be able to have one that can run half a marathon, but can it think? Can it become very sentient, very clever, solve problems, think as good as a human or better, etc. The other thing that's incredibly difficult to do is have a hand that operates like a human, and they've nailed that too. Again, all designed by Tesla. So with the cars, which are a lot more complex than a robot, a lot more parts, a lot more weight, the robots are a lot simpler. And you know nobody can manufacture at scale like Tesla, not even the Chinese are even close. They hammer things together with humans. Whereas Tesla hammer things together with robots. And I've walked the Tesla production, the Cybertruck production line twice. There's no humans on that line. It's completely automated. And then final part is the actuators. Again, all designed by Tesla. And they are the little pieces that, little motors that move things around like fingers. And if you look at how a hand operates, it's extremely complicated. But they have all of that. But the key thing I do kind of want to remind people of is as well is what's going to come. First of all, they source everything locally. They've got the supply chains tied up. The chips inside the robot, they have given a commitment to TSMC to make them. Okay. Uh, now, I do understand the risk here, but I also believe that the Tesla will not be deploying their bots to China at all because the bots will have the biggest total addressable market in the USA, where the salary replacement benefit is the largest as well. There's no point in deploying a $25,000 bot to replace $3 an hour salary. But if you're going to replace a $65 an hour salary, that's a much bigger opportunity. And that's exactly what they're going for. That's important as well. And the final thing, I do want to stress this, and this is where it gets a little bit deep. And this is why we position ourselves in these types of assets. This is so critical. And again, like the first question, this one takes a bit of time. And just... <laughs> Not only Stan, Stanley Druckenmiller's rule, please wrap your heads around this, the, the Stanley Druckenmiller rule, but also this rule too, okay? Marginal cost of intelligence is going to zero, okay? Superhuman intelligence will cost nothing very shortly, and the marginal cost of labor is going to zero, all right? Humanity has never, ever, ever faced anything like this before. We've had industrial revolutions, but not, nothing like this. And when I talk about marginal cost of intelligence going to zero, that means AI will think for free once trained. Neural networks can replicate cognitive tasks across different robots, You know, doing everything from reasoning, writing, coding, manufacturing, diagnosing, medical procedures, operations, et cetera, at near zero cost. That's frightening to think about. What happens to everybody who has access to the equivalent of an infinity army of PhDs, analysts, creators, etc., for nothing. Intelligence is no longer scarce. It's abundant. This has never happened before. Take your time, pause this, rewind it back three minutes, listen to it again. 
and entire professions, educational structures, economic hierarchies, everything is built on scarcity, 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 and scarcity of intelligence. That's about to go away. Get ready. I warn you. You may think I'm high or crazy. No. <laughs> and the smartest people in the world see what's coming. Okay, so just take that for a second again. Marginal cost of intelligence is going to zero. Second thing, marginal cost of labor is going to zero. This is also incredibly important to understand, everybody. This means uh, if we think about the marginal cost of labor going to zero, you got robotics and AI equals free labor, manual, repetitive, and even skilled labor is being less automated. Now, I don't see that happening for people that, you know, craftsmen with wood and roofers, and carpenters and electricians and stuff like that. No, not that type of stuff. But other stuff could definitely be in hot water. And whether it's robots and warehouses or AI doing your taxes, labor is being decoupled from humans, uh, writers, lawyers. Um, they, they are the ones. I'm not worried about nurses and dentists and skilled people with their hands, but you know, I'm really worried about uh, a lot of the others too. So ju just, just bear that in mind. Implications means abundance, which is good, but who will get that abundance? A lot of people think there's going to be infinite abundance for everybody. Everybody's going to be rich. Everybody's going to be able to be like in that movie. I can't remember the name of the movie. There's a, a movie where you got these people, you know, they're kind of overweight. They sit in these floating chairs in a spaceship and they just suck on drinks and eat food all day long. Uh, it was like a cartoon movie, but it was hilarious. I saw a clip of it. Um, the question is, does the abundance mean that for humanity? I'm not sure. I still believe, as always, one thing that will remain the same is wealth will be concentrated amongst the very top percentiles, okay? Anyway, big change coming, everybody. The statement isn't about finance. It's about the rewriting of civilization, and I do believe that's coming. So watch out. The next five years will be absolutely mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing.